I feel like I went to hell and back to protect them and the people in this room. But too many are now telling me that hell doesn't exist or that hell actually wasn't that bad. The indifference shown to my colleagues is disgraceful. My law enforcement career prepared me to cope with some of the aspects of this experience. Being an officer, you know your life is at risk whenever you walk out the door, even if you don't expect otherwise law-abiding citizens to take up arms against you. But nothing, truly nothing, has prepared me to address those elected members of our government who continue to deny the events of that day. And in doing so, betray their oath of office. There it is. Hi again, everyone. It's five o'clock in the East, continuing our coverage of the powerful and emotional hearing that Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell never wanted you to see. It was up on Capitol Hill earlier today. We heard from officers who were on the front lines on January 6th. And while the committee wanted to keep things nonpartisan with a stated goal of just following the facts, the role that members of the GOP and the ex-president played in inciting the deadly riot, as well as their efforts to downplay and rewrite the history of the attack in the ensuing months, are impossible to avoid. You heard Officer Fanon there voicing what it feels like for them, for those who were beaten and brutalized by Trump supporters, to hear Republicans in Congress who, in an effort to protect their own political futures, have denied the horrors of that day. The Republican talking point of it was a peaceful protest or just a normal tourist visit clearly and forcefully disproven by the four officers' testimonies today. Meanwhile, Republicans, other than the two serving on the committee, who face opposition and ridicule from their party for doing so, are now largely watching from the sidelines. It's a predicament of their own making since Kevin McCarthy made the decision to boycott the investigation, forcing his party instead to hold press conferences before and after the hearing, spinning their versions of the attack on our democracy. Now that the committee has displayed its seriousness and purpose before the American public and will continue its investigation into the deadly insurrection, Republicans will be out of the room, totally not a part of it, not able to steer the narrative. All the more significant is their own actions will come into focus and be a centerpiece of the committee's investigation. Here was Officer Daniel Hodges when he was asked what he wants this committee to pursue. I need you guys to address if anyone in power had a role in this. If anyone in power coordinated or aided or abetted or tried to downplay, tried to prevent the investigation of this uh, terrorist attack because we can't do it. And as Officer Harry Dunn concluded in a stirring plea to this committee, there's absolutely no hiding from the politics that were at play that day. There's been a sentiment that's going around that says everybody's trying to make January 6th political. Well, it's not a secret that it was political. They literally were there to stop the steal. So when people say it shouldn't be political, it is. It was and it is. There's no getting around that. Telling the truth shouldn't be hard. Fighting for fighting on January 6th, that was hard. Showing up January 7th, that was hard. The 8th, the 9th, the 10th, all the way till today, that was hard. When the fence came down, that was hard. We lost our a layer of protection that we had, and the fence came down, and still nothing has changed. Everything is different, but nothing has changed. Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger are being lauded as courageous heroes. And while I agree with that notion, why? Because they told the truth? Why is telling the truth hard? I guess in this America, it is. Us four officers, we would do January 6th all over again. We wouldn't stay home because we knew it was gonna happen. We would show up. That's courageous. That's heroic. So what I ask from you all 
is to get to the bottom of what happened. And that includes, like, I echo the sentiments of all of the other officers sitting here. I use an analogy to describe what I want as a hitman. If a hitman is hired and he kills somebody, the hitman goes to jail. But not only does the hitman go to jail, but the person who hired them does. There was an attack carried out on January 6th, and a hitman sent them. I want you to get to the bottom of that. Thank you. The search for who hired the hitman is where we start today with some of our most favorite friends. John Heilman is here. He's host and executive producer of Showtime's The Circus, which was just nominated for an Emmy. Congratulations, my friend. Also the host of the Hell and High Water podcast from The Recount. Also joining us, Frank Figluzzi, former assistant director for counterintelligence at the FBI and host of the Bureau podcast. And David Pluff is here, former Obama campaign manager. Lucky for us, all three MSNBC contributors. Well, John Heilman, who hired the hitman? Huh. Um, hello, Nicole. Um, I think we all know who hired the hitman, and I think the officers, the officers in that room uh, today, knew who hired the hitman, and that they described, um, uh, you know, bluntly and, and clearly uh, where this investigation uh, needs to go. And, and they know the truth of this, and it was kind of part of the power of the day. I, you know, I, I I've been doing this for thirty some odd years, and I've never. I've never seen a congressional congressional testimony that's had more emotional impact than this. Um, we all sort of on some level knew what these guys were going to say. And and yet it was wrenching to sit through and I, to, to, to witness. And I, 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 I don't often I just, you know, I would never felt as humbled um, watching congressional testimony by anybody, I, I think, in in the time that I've been in this job. And um, so, so humbled and so grateful for their for these people's service and all of these men describing what they went through. And, and, and in the middle of that humility, that sense of overwhelming humility watching this, I was struck on the other side of that with this incredibly powerful sense of just what kind of moral depravity uh, you, you, you must be in the grips of to engage in the kind of whitewashing and memory holing and attempted uh, gaslighting that we've seen on the part of so many Republicans, not just the former president of the United States, but so many in that party. It's not just that they're doing something that's evil and insidious and dangerous for the country. It's all of those things. But I just can't imagine how what kind of a monster you would have to be to watch those men listen to that testimony, know the truth, hear them talk about it, and then stand up and say that the things they said were not true, the things that, that it was all a day at the beach, that it was all a picnic, it was all a vacation. It was in some Donald Trump's recent tellings, it was a moment of glory. These were people trying to do the right thing. These these rioters, these mob mob members, these insurrectionists, these terrorists. I just I just I'm I rarely I mean, the, the, just the starkness of the kind of moral monstrosity that's required to take that position in the face of that kind of testimony. It does truly boggle my mind. 